Hi, this is the YouTube video that will explain how to use the MPCA calculator that you now need to use to have your additives approved. There's a, another video that we have that shows you kind of the policy regarding additives, you know, what the new policies are, what are and how they're changing from our old ones. This guidance, doc, guidance video is just for uh, how to use this calculator. So I'll start off by just opening a document. So the calculator is in Microsoft Excel and I have it saved to my desktop right now. I'm gonna open it. And this is a, for the calculator to work, it needs to use macros. So we're gonna to have to make sure that macros are enabled. When I open it up, there's this yellow bar right here. Um, if I click enable content, that will enable macros and will allow this calculator to work. Um, if for some reason that yellow bar doesn't appear, what you can do is go to File, go down to Options, go into Trust Center, Trust Center Settings, go to Macro Settings, and then click Enable All Macros. I already have macro, macros enabled, so I don't need to enable them, so I'm just gonna hit Cancel. Um, this is, we're using Microsoft 2010 right now. It, Microsoft 2013 should work just the same way. So this is the main screen of the calculator. Um, there's a bunch of different text boxes that have information that will be useful to you. Um, this is, I'm, I've highlighted the, the first pane. It kind of describes how you step through the calculator. There's three buttons that you need to click and fill in the information. Um, over here, there's kind of a checklist we've developed with you that has things to know on the right size, right side and uh, required information you need to have your additive approved on the left side. If you scroll down, these uh, text boxes right here are uh, buttons that summarize all the information you have entered in the form. So right now there is default information in there. As we step through this process, we'll enter in the correct information. Um, and this yellow box right here is kind of where the rubber meets the road. This is the button that says whether your additive is approvable or not at the dose you're choosing to use it at. You want to make sure that says yes before you send it to us. So. Once you've entered in all this information, you'll save your document and you'll email it to us for, for final approval. And this flowchart here kind of steps you through the added review process. It kind of contains some of the logic that we use to calculate your additive concentrations. A more in-depth explanation of every single one of these boxes is available in the companion text document that's available on our website as well. So. Refer to that if you're confused by any of these uh, boxes in the flowchart. So I guess we'll start at the beginning. So the first thing we need to do is do button A. And this is where we enter the permit information. I'm just going to start. We're just going to create a fake wastewater treatment plant. So the facility is going to be, you know, MN wastewater TP. The permit number is MN0001. The discharge type, it's from this drop-down box. It's a municipal plant, and it discharges to SC001, surface discharge 00, and the contact. This is just kind of fake, so it's me, last name, John, contact email, something, at state.mn.us. Phone number and then a submittal date. And so this needs to be in date format. And one thing you'll notice as you're going through this that if you don't enter in, if you don't fill out a box, it won't let you hit this save button. Um, so, and if you're confused about what any of these mean, you can click on a, a question button and it will um, explain to you what that, what the companion text box means. I'm going to hit save here and if I go down to my summary button all that information is now saved into 
another tab on the spreadsheet and that information will be available to the MPCA when you submit it to us. We'll use that information to identify what permit and uh, you're, you're using, you're applying to change your additive for. So next thing we're going to do is move over to button B, which this button right here calculates the projected effluent concentration for the additive you're using. You have two options. You can say you've already calculated your projected effluent concentration in milligram per liter and you can just enter it. So you can just hit 10. You say, you say you're going to dose it at 10 milligrams per liter, you'd hit, then you would just hit OK. We're not going to go through that step. Um, we're going to calculate our additive concentration based on uh, a dosing rate that we're choosing. The first thing, we're just going to start from the top. So the first thing we need to know is our outfalls average dry weather design flow. And so in, in million gallons per day. And that's, for this example, that's going to be one MGD. This is a continuous flow. We're dosing our additive in gallons per day. And we're adding one gallon per day. The specific gravity of our additive for this example is one. Specific gravity is equivalent to density, um, but it doesn't have units. And we're going to, another key factor, and we're going to go back and revisit this later, is what what is the removal percentage of their additive before final discharge? So between when you additive, add your additive and when it leaves your, your facility, how much of it is removed? So for this example, we're just going to say, 0% of it is removed. You enter this value. It has to, your value has to be somewhere between 0 and 100. So for this example, 0% is removed. So I'm going to hit calculate save. The projected effluent concentration for my additive is 1 milligram per liter. It pops up there. And I can close this document. And we can see that that populates the summary button right here. So we know all the information is entered correctly. The next step we're going to do is calculate the aquatic toxicity concentration for my additive. And to do that, we're going to use an example additive. And that is for an additive called formalin. It's basically formaldehyde and, and methanol mixed together. Um, this is used in various industries across the state for toxic, for to control organisms. So to get the information we need for our additive toxicity, we're going to need um, toxicity information on our additive. We're going to go down to section 12, ecological information. So first thing you need to do is open up your additive and make sure you have information in the ecological information section 12 of your MSDS. If you don't have it, go, go back and talk to your um, chemical vendor. Now that we found that information, we have enough information to fill out the information button C. So button C uh, requires you to enter a bunch of information. This is the, our most technical button. It requires some information that we're going to have to go to our MSDS for and uh, we're going to have to find some flow rates that are hopefully available on our permit documents and we'll, we'll get to that in a second. But let's just start from the beginning. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to enter our additive brand name. And for our example here, we're working with formalin. So formalin is formaldehyde and methanol. Um, that's its brand name. This additive, it's going to be dosed continuously in our example. Um, if the additive is dosed intermittently, then you would have to go over to this text box right, text box right here and um, enter how your additive is dosed. So it could be once per month for five minutes um, or whatever, however you dose your additive. But um, so be sure to include that information. If you're confused on anything, you can click on any of these buttons and it'll explain this button. This additive is dosed continuously in our example. So we're going to make it continuous. So our next thing we need to enter is our flow rate information. So we're going to click this button right here and we're going to calculate our stream dilution ratio. So this stream dilution ratio allows you or gives you credit for stream dilution. So you're 
if you're, for example, discharging your additive to a high flow stream, um, this, added, this calculator would take that into consideration and give you more credit uh, for your additive so you could discharge at a higher concentration. So it's to your advantage um, that we allow this for you. So uh, we're going to enter our average wet weather design, dry weather design flow, which is 1 MGD, and our receiving water 7Q10 flow rate. Um, the 7Q10 flow rate for your facility um, will, should, can be on your uh, permit documents if you are a major facility. If, it's, if you don't know this number, uh, give us a call and we can get it to you. Um, for our example, our receiving water 7Q10 flow rate, and by the way, the 7Q10 flow rate is the flow rate we use that is basically the lowest seven day flow rate that occurs once in every 10 years in your receiving water. So it's a very low flow rate and we choose it because if your additive is dosed at, into that low flow rate, it, it's protective. So we use the 7Q10 flow rate for this calculation. Um, and there's a little button here that you can click if you don't know it, how to get it. So we'll hit OK. Our, you can see it updated our stream dilution ratio because we're discharging to a zero 7Q10 receiving water, the stream dilution ratio is zero. This number of species thing. So this aquatic toxicity calculator is based off of the information in section 12 of your MSDS, which is uh, toxicity to, to species that are reference species. So we know if if a species, if it's per, if it's safe for this species, it will be safe for almost every other species. So right here we have three species. One of which is an algae. Algaes are not um, an acceptable species. That is, you can find that in our guidance document, and you can also click this button here, species used for reference toxicity test, and it will explain to you that an algae is not an acceptable species. So we have uh, two, the two required species. We have a minimum of two. One has to be a daphnida, which is a water flea, and one has to be a freshwater fish. So we have our minimum two. If you want, for example, if your additive has five species, you could click five and you would, um, it's, you, it's to your advantage to use as many species as possible. Um, so we're going to start here Let's enter the information for our Daphnia. So this is Arthropoda Daphnia. It's a species and it's LC50, which is the information that we need, is two milligrams per liter. So we're just gonna pick Daphnida, Daphnia species and the LC50 concentration is two. LC50 stands for the lethal concentration at 50%, so that's the concentration at which 50% of the reference organisms are killed. That's the concentration we use in this calculation. That's what uh, the EPA uses to calculate toxic concentrations. And so we have our Daphnid. Our other species is a guppy. Um, so that, we're just going to go in here and Let's see, do we have guppy anywhere? I think you could consider a, a guppy a fathead minnow. Either way, we know it's a freshwater fish. And if we look at our LC50 concentration, it's somewhere between, between 50 and 200 milligrams per liter. Um, we're gonna choose the 50 value. And then we're gonna scroll down and click Save Calculate Aquatic Toxicity Standard. So it gives a little pop-up here. The, ad, the chronic standard is applicable for our um, additive for our and wastewater treatment plant because the stream dilution ratio is less than 20 to 1. And our, uh, the chronic standard is 0 0.0085, which is very low. The chronic standard is applicable and our, it's a, very low chronic standard. So that's the number we need to meet. So when we go back out and look at our summary information, we see that our additive is not approvable at our current dose. The calculated chronic standard is applicable. 
the dose is 0 0.009, that's the, that's the, I'm sorry, the concentration is 0 0.009, that's the concentration we have to be below, and that value is less than this value right over here, our projected effluent concentration. So we, right now, if we're going to be dosing at one gallon per day into a one million gallon per day flow rate, um, we're not going to make our additive. So one of the things you can do to make your additive work is you can figure out, is, is there something we can do to make our additive disappear before it goes into the effluent? So I'm going to click down here to reload last entry. And let's say I put in a biological sand filter. And that biological sand filter removes 100% of the formalin. Now, let's calculate what our effluent concentration be. If, it, if, we're, if we're moving 100% of our additive before the effluent, before it reaches the receiving water, the concentration should be zero. So let's go back. It's that we're do still dosing at the same rate. We just have a way to remove our additive, to remove all of the additive before discharge. Um, so that now our projected effluent concentration is zero because we're removing 100% of it. And if I go over here to my yellow button, it says my additive is approvable at my current dose. Now that we know that our additive is potentially approvable, we need to save this document, save this Excel document. Um, I'm saving it as formalin. I'm, and we, we save it. And we're going to send this document along with the MSDS that we used for your additive as an attachment to an email and send that to the MPCA additive approval email address um, and we will review, get back to you within five days about whether your additive is approved or not. Um, I would just like to reiterate if you have any questions or concerns throughout this process feel free to email us. We're always checking our email box. Um, additionally, call us at the number at the end of this uh, video and we'll be able to answer your questions. You know, sometimes you might not have the information you need, you might not know your flow rate, you might not understand how your this calculator works or how you calculate a certain value. So give us a call and, and we want to walk, walk you through this process and help you out. We're, we don't want to be the barrier in this approval process. All right, thanks.